What is up guys? You'll have to bear with me. I'm sorry I had just kind of woke up. Uh, as you know, I'm on Midnight's guys and let me fix the orientation on this camera real quick. Um, or let's see. Mm -hmm. All right, so all right, I'm going to get uh, logged into uh, my normal uh, um, YouTube and uh, on my laptop, so I can see all the comments and stuff. Um, and tonight we're going to talk about big bites or big baits to catch some fall jaints. And I got plenty of stuff here in the, uh, the tackle room we'll have to go through. So anyway, uh, go leave a comment for me uh, if you're in here so I can uh, um correspond with you i'm sorry I, i'm slow to talk here i i've been working midnights and i literally just woke up at like 6 59 like or 5 59 all right hey all right so what's up nick joe reynolds dustin taylor uh james quinn how you guys doing um let's see here. my camera screen is giving me fits right now there we go. There we go. So anyway, um, I'm sorry I didn't get to do anything last week. I, um, I had some things going on and, uh, I just couldn't, let me fix this camera. God dang. I just could not, uh, live stream at all last week. And, uh, I apologize to those guys. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll be, uh, doing some more, uh, live streaming this week. Uh, up on Facebook Thursday night, and I'll be sure to upload it here um, on Debate Man TV. Uh, hopefully, I've got some more videos uh, I can get edited and put up there. Just trying to get my bearings together right now. I'm sorry, I've been sleeping. These uh, 12 hour midnight shifts kick my butt. But catching Jane's on Lake Fork. Awesome. Jaints is officially spelt with a J, J A I N T S, and uh, there are some people on Facebook uh, that were kind of trying to take credit for Jaints and say that they started it and uh, made some T-shirts. Uh, but I talked to them and they they were kind of cool about it. Uh, after I told them, "Hey man, uh, look, I'm kind of the OG of Jaints," and um, I let them go ahead and make good t-shirts with it, but uh, I got that trademark uh, working on, so hopefully uh, I'll be able to uh, make some cool clothing, um, have Jane's trademarked, and we'll go from there. Dude, I've never been fly fishing, but that'd be awesome. But I'm fixing to show you some baits to catch Jane's this fall, and uh, I'm going to start with swim baits. That's everybody's favorite thing to throw. Um... Now, I'm sure you saw uh, last time I had a Scottsboro tackle line through swim bait, which is, and I'm going to move around a lot in here grabbing stuff, which is this right here. Any type, type of harness swim bait is always really good in the fall uh, to catch some really big fish. Um, I know it's Tackle Warehouse has these back in stock right now. Uh, this is a six inch bait. Now, the reason I like a harness in the fall is I can fish this in a lot shallower water uh, than normal. Uh, Scottsboro is actually has weight inside of it. But uh, this would be a really good swim bait. Uh, but if I'm going to fish in the fall, typically, I'm going to fish shallow water or I'm going to fish a brown grass. And that's when I want something like. A big weedless swim bait. Uh, this right here is the Scottsboro STC swimmer. Uh, this is the six inch. And how I would rig this 
would be on a weighted beast hook. Uh, that way I can fish it around grass and everything. This color is called Viper Shad and it looks really good. And I've caught several fish on this thing. But uh, long story short, there's that. Uh, the babe swim bait is really good. I actually uh, I don't have a babe right here. Or I might. I'll have to find one. Um, see, uh, I've got some more swim baits I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to grab them. And all these baits we're going to talk about tonight. Are big. So we're just kind of going to stick with swim baits here for a little bit. All right, I'm going to catch up on the comments. I actually like line through quite a bit. Um, that way the, the bass can get it. Um, they don't rip your bait as much. What do I think of Jinko swim baits? Uh, I really don't care much for Jinko swim baits, to be honest with you. Um, they're all right. They're probably one of the better things that Jinko makes, but the tail doesn't thump as much as it spins like a helicopter. Um, what real, man, I don't get too caught up on what real, um, or just whatever I got. I, I like to stick with a six to one. Uh, for swim baits, I'll even throw them on sevens. Um, but I want something with a deep spool that I can put 17 to 20 pound fluorocarbon on. Um, right now, I, I wish I had one as a die with a two or 200 would be good. But I mean, I throw them on Corrado K's, um, die with CTs, just something with a six to one ratio. It's got good drag. Um, what's up, Thomas? Yeah, that fish. Yeah, that was a good fish, Nick. It was really skinny, unhealthy. It's, it's, it, it looked good, though. Um, you can tell our fish on Kentucky Lake have got, got some issue going. So, All right. Uh, we're going to stick with soft swim baits. And, and what one thing I really like to imitate this time of year is gizzard shad. Um, and those gizzard shad are, are, are big fish. Or... Uh, they are a favorite of big fish this time of year. And uh, long story short, I want baits that are going to imitate gizzard shad. So, this is a really cool bait. And I haven't thrown it a whole lot, but I've had some really big followers. And this is the Savage Gear 3D Roach. Um, you can see this is a jointed soft plastic swim bait. Um, and it's really, really realistic. However, uh, you, this thing is not very heavy. Uh, so you're almost visually fishing this and you had to fish it super, super slow. It comes with its own treble hook harness system. Uh, it goes in the belly. There's a couple little slots in the bottom here. And this is going to imitate a big old gizzard. Um, I've caught a few on this. Um, I actually had a second one. Uh, the only downside is if you catch a couple big ones, it will tear this up. If you live in a land of musky or toothy critters, going to have some issues with this. But man, this is a, a really awesome looking bait. It looks just like a gizzard in the water. Um, it's kind of soft. And it is kind of tough to cast sometimes. And that's, uh, that's from Savage Gear. I really like that bait. What's up, Colin? Yeah, I love Spro Crank Baits. All right. Let's see here. Now, uh, I haven't thrown this one yet. Uh, I was given this. This is, uh... This is uh, made, uh, I got this from 13 Fishing at ICAST. Uh, they gave it to me. And um, 
it's uh, made by a different company as well. Um, God. But this is a really good swim bait as far as looks. I haven't thrown it in the water, but I know some guys uh, who have. I think it's like a, a tack shad or something like that. A DTR. I, I can't remember the exact name, but it's got a really cool tail. It's kind of like a trash fish tail, uh, but different. No, this is not a high. It's not a high pot HPH uh, gizzard shad. Uh, I wish it was. I'm not that cheap though. I'm too cheap to pay for one. But what's cool about this bait? This looks just like a live gizzard shad. It's even got the little thing going off the the fin. I personally like the purple. I'm a purple guy. But uh, you see here, it's got this little slot for a beast hook. And uh, it lets this bait really collapse down. But you want the ultimate gizzard shad profile. This is uh, how I would go. Now, I, I'd like to figure out how to rig this uh, line through. Stuff like that. But one thing cool about this bait is you're going to fish for one really, really big bite. There's not much of a better gizzard shad imitator than that right there. You can have it weedless for around the grass but this tail uh, it's not gonna let you burn this bait this is meant to get you a lot of action on slow roll uh this bait they say it's six inches but man this is really like eight it is a really really big bait i mean you can tell compare it to the savage gear here look how much bigger that bait is yeah it kind of does con um uh, I, I had the name in this thing. It's like a tack shad or something like that. Uh, it's been, there's another company that's been making this for like two years or a year and a half. And then 13 fishing subcontracted them uh, to do this bait. So I'll, I'll figure it out. When using a swim bait, do you want your knot to be center of the hook eye? Say 12 o'clock or overthinking it you're overthinking it i'm trying to get my battery to charge guys uh i've got my phone hooked up and for some reason it does not want to charge so this may be very short unfortunately all right uh let's stick with soft swim baits one of my favorites and uh, this one's not a good one to show, but uh, the Osprey Top Talon. Now, this is a weighted swim bait. It's uh, internally, uh, it's got weight in here. And uh, you see this bait has some white spots on there. And that's because uh, when these baits sit around or they're in your tackle box for extended periods of time, or it doesn't matter if you fish with them or not. Uh, they'll develop this little white spot. And this is a chemical reaction between uh, the hook, the lead on the hook, and uh, the plastic. But this Osprey, this is the tournament top town. Uh, it'll catch them. This is one of my favorite uh, deep swim baits in the fall. Uh, this is the 6-inch Talon. Uh, they got a super sharp hook. Um, but the reason is I can reel this bait really slow and get some awesome tail action and it's got you know the profile of a big shad and it's really subtle it's not overly aggressive and i'm going to fish this bait you know in 10 to 20 foot of water but it's not quite heavy enough to fish way way deep but 10 to 15 is where this bait really really shines um they got several good shad colors uh, they actually got a really good gizzard shad one this is like tw shad or something like that but this osprey it will catch them this is one of my my favorites uh, i had some osprey line throughs but for some reason i can't find them um i do prefer the top hook actually to the line through where i live um <clears throat> now uh speaking of a big bait uh, i've got a sweet west coast bait here took me forever uh, to get a hold of one of these. This is the Battle 
Shad from Working Class Zero. Uh, this is a very similar kind of design uh, to this bait, but it's almost, it's got a boot tail on the back, but it's what I like to call a wedge tail. Got a very unique plastic. It feels totally different than anything I've got. Uh, definitely custom molded, but again, big profile, uh, profiling a big gizzard shad. And the reason I like the gizzard, again, uh, that's your, that's your big bass. A cheeseburger of the fall. That's what the the big large mouth are, are hurting up. They definitely feed on fret, thread fin shad, but if you want to target the biggest fish in the lake, I'm going after the biggest meal they like. So rig this thing with the beast hook. I would love to see them be able to make this bait, you know, not necessarily a line through, but uh, pre-weighted with the hook for us Tennessee River guys. Uh, this is a really good swim bait. I had to pay, I guess I bought this thing last year. I paid like 40 bucks for it. Uh, I've thrown it a couple of times. It's got really good action. If you can find these on Working Class Zero, uh, you better buy them because they're pretty hard to get. And this is just the, uh, I think this is the, the seven inch model. They make a nine inch too. Uh, now I throw a couple hard swim baits at you real quick. Let's see, I'll go answer some comments. Yes, that is the BAMF Shad by 13 Fish and Tyler. Um, what is the best way to incorporate big swim baits in a tournament strategy? Throw one all day and hope for five bigs or just use it to get a kicker? Uh, I really don't fish a lot of big swim baits in tournaments. Um, I really don't even fish tournaments anymore. I've kind of quit, but... If I was going to, a lot of guys here, um, you get your best five, uh, and then you go chase for jinx with the big swim bait. Uh, I mean, there's times like throwing a, fishing a, a buddy tournament where uh, my partner might be fishing a crankbait, and I throw uh, a swim bait behind them. Um, that seems to work out pretty well. Uh, I just wouldn't uh, put all my eggs in one basket, because you're, I mean, you're already gambling if you're fishing a bass tournament. You're doubling down if you're throwing big swim baits in a tournament now it also depends on where you're at if you're at clear lake uh if you're not throwing a big swim bait you're probably gonna get hurt a certain time of the year i do not miss tournament fishing at all um too much drama all kinds of stuff what rod and gear ratio do you reel do you recommend for a harness version uh six to one um and I guess you're talking, I like a six to one on about any swim bait, uh, Dustin. I will throw a seven on like hollow bellies and stuff. I can keep those down pretty easy. Um, rod, that's up to you. Uh, a lot of these swim baits, anything over an ounce to, to two ounces, you're going to need at least a seven six to a seven nine heavy action rod. Um, I've been using my dial rods for a while, but... On these big, big swim baits, I like a Dobbins like 795 or 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 better. Uh, I like that backbone, a little extra length to cast them out. Who makes the best blueback heron? And I, I I don't know because I don't. I will go with uh, Mike Buka makes the bull herring, and uh, that's a really underrated bait. A lot of guys really like that bait. Um, it is a really good swim bait. Um, you no, know, I don't miss tournament fishing. All I wasn't any good at it. Um, so now I want to talk about a couple hard baits real quick. This is a glide bait. Uh, this is called the Shizzard, and you're not going to see this very many places. In fact, I may be the only channel on Facebook that has a Shizzard. Um, this is a handmade deal. This comes out uh, west, and this is one of the sickest glides you'll ever throw. And uh, I wish I knew how to get my hands on some more, but they make a, a, a four, a five, and a seven-inch chisard. And the, this thing will just... And 
it will knife through the water. You can reel it really slow, and it's got a real nice swimming action. You can burn it. Um, but you see these big eyes on there? That's what I like. But this is a gizzard imitator. Uh, a really good bait in the spring as well. Uh, but the shizzard is a great, great swim bait. Do I throw a money minnow? Uh, man, James, I'm not a money minnow guy. Yeah, uh, Ethan, I have an S waiver. It's in my house. I, le I, I left it in there on accident. So S waiver is one of the best uh, glides for the money. It's a really good bait. Uh, and then there's this guy. This is a bull shad four by four. And uh, this is a wake bait, actually. And believe it or not, I really like big wake baits in the fall. It causes a, a pretty good disturbance. And again, look what we're imitating here. Gizzard shad. I'm going to go with these bigger baits. Because gizzard shad tend to be bigger than threadfin shad. However, there's some lakes that threadfin get pretty big. Uh, but this bull shad 4x4 is always, it's got joints, it's got a rattle. So not only are you going to get all the motion and commotion uh, from the joints and this big lip right here, uh, you also have that rattle in there. This bait has been probably one of Mike Buka's uh, best selling baits because it produces a ton of big fish. Uh, you're not going to get 10 to 20 bites a day on these things, but you'll get four to five and you're going to get a really uh, a big one. And fall is a perfect time of year to throw a wake bait with so many guys throwing top water and other things. You can go behind them uh, with this big four by four and you can catch them. Now the good thing this lip, you can run this over lay down, stumps. It just doesn't hang up. Really, really good bait. And this is the wake four by four uh, from Bullshad Swim Baits. Now, if you don't want the lip, obviously I want to throw a six inch or eight inch bull shad this time of year. Uh, a lot of guys ask me what's my setup for a bull shad. It doesn't it doesn't change from anything I would normally throw. I don't have a specific rod and rail for for a specific bait. Like I don't have a bull shad rod, and I don't have an osprey rod. But I'm going to throw any th those heavier baits on something seven six or heavier or longer uh six to one gear ratio reel and, and with that wake bait you can get away with a seven somebody's commented about shimano tranks uh that's an awesome bait no hook rash on any of those baits yeah actually there's some hook rash on there bud but a lot of this stuff i keep in my room that i'm hanging up i don't ever take to the lake so Sebo magic is a good swimmer Yeah, so, CJ, I don't have hook rash on some of these baits. Uh, I keep them hung up. Uh, that way, they don't uh, get scratched up and stuff like that in my box. Um, <clears throat> I try to have two or three of many things. That way, I don't, uh, I don't have to worry about taking my favorite bait to the lake that I was fixing to put on Facebook or YouTube live. Um... I wish I had more teeth marks on these baits. I haven't been fishing as much as I'd like to. Uh, Hinkle Shad is really awesome. I wish I had uh, a chance to have one, actually. Um, it's really expensive. I, I would like to get my hands on a DRT Tiny Clash. That's an awesome, awesome bait. I got the whiskey lips. I don't even know what that means. Uh, no, uh, I, I like the trash fish a little bit better uh, in the summer, Joe. I was actually going to get to that. Um, I got to get some baits here. I got a whole Bass Mafia box full. So uh, this right here is what they call the trash fish. Uh, if you watch Tactical Bass, and you would know about this. This is the 8-inch version. Uh, 
there's some guys that throw this in the fall. I've thrown it more in the summer than I have in the fall. Uh, there are a lot of guys that will throw it, especially in the grass lakes. This is the 8-inch version. Um, and these are just some random colors they sent me. Uh, you can see this. what's made this trash fish famous is this big tail right here. Uh, and this tail, and this one's a little goofy. And that's because uh, Benno at Little Creeper, uh, he sent me some free ones. Uh, that didn't have eyes on there, just seconds. But uh, I just peel this excess off there. But this tail is really fat, and these baits are super soft. Let me see if I can get a better one for you. And uh, <clears throat> this tail uh, just kind of goes in the back, and, and it flops. But these are the softest swim baits you'll find. But you can't burn these. These fish are. These are meant to fish really, really slow on the bottom. I think this is like a, a, a hitch color. And uh, this is the 8-inch version. I'll rig this. Really redneck, actually. This is a redneck rig. Here's a color I throw on Kentucky Lake a lot. Uh, this is Albino IU. Uh, and I took an 8 aught hammer swim bait head. And yes, I cut the head in half and paired it up. And uh, I've glued this in. And this is what I'll throw out deep. That's how I rig my trash fish out deep. Uh, definitely, it doesn't look the prettiest, but it absolutely hooks them up. But uh, I like throwing uh, the 6-inch version uh, of the trash fish during the fall, which is this one right here. Uh, this is a chartreuse shad. And I'll rig this thing on a beast hook. And I'll fish it really, really slow around shallow cover. And, and I catch a pretty good amount of fish on this thing. I like the trash fish better in the summer. It's not my go-to in the fall. But it definitely works. And that's why we experiment with stuff. I have not uh, used a 316 uh, Baby Wake or any of his stuff. Let's see. I'm reading Charlie's comments. Yeah, I like that big trunks. It's a good reel. Uh, I got a friend that hooked me up with that chiser. There's a guy in Arizona that makes that uh, bait, actually. And uh, he was able to hook me up. Uh, I would love to be able to uh, sell them. Hopefully, we'll be back in the tackle game after the first of the year. Who knows? Possibly. Uh, working so much at night that uh, I ain't really have a whole lot of time for anything else. But uh, let's see what else I got here. Uh, I do like throwing uh, some bladed jigs in the fall. So I'm going to kind of get away from swim baits now, if that's okay. Um... When I throw a bloody jig in the fall, I actually throw a really big one, a big profile. Um, and this is made by a company called D&M out in California. Um, this is like a half, this is a half ounce version. And uh, this is kind of like a little gold uh, shiner. I throw this on an overcast day sometimes. Um, and I'm going to fish this out kind of deep, but my favorite one is this right here and if you look at it's got a huge huge grub on the back this is about a five inch gallons grub and i'm throwing this out on a ledge and i'm trying to imitate a really big shad down there and it's just hunting around and I, i've caught a lot of fish on these big bladed jigs with a gross size trailer on there uh gallons sent me like a hundred count bag of these things i just asked for a sample and they sent me a ton of these um but that's a D&M uh, chatterbait. Uh, they're not. They're hard to find now. They had to redo the the tie because that violates the patent. But y'all see me. I like that chartreuse purple. Put that big white grub on there. That's a big fish bait. Not going to get get a lot of bites on that, but I'll get the right one. I'm clean my. Gotta clean my stuff up. In case y'all didn't see it, I did get. This is the new color jackhammer. This is Heights Hot Crawl. 
Uh, that's a red jackhammer. I'm really excited about that. Uh, let's see. Evergreen ND 180 uh, used to be called what? I have no clue. I don't even know. I know that's a a, a big weight style swim bait. I don't have. I, you've seen my swim bait collection. I'm not. I I'll be honest. I love swim baits, but every time I show one. Everybody wants to see a swim bait collection, and every show turns into a swim bait show. So, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to keep this uh, moving tonight. This is another new uh, jackhammer color. Now this is uh, the new bluegill color. And uh, shout out to my buddies over at Geared, uh, Pro Geared in Arkansas. They hooked me up with those uh, new color jackhammers. All right, now let's talk about. Uh, top water. And you want to talk about really big top waters? You don't have to go very far. I love the I love the new Elite models. I just haven't got to uh, put them in my hands yet. Uh, I'm supposed to get to Tula 100. Uh, I've been waiting on it and waiting on it. Maybe Dawa doesn't like me anymore, and if not, that's okay. I'll still use their stuff, uh, but. And show you all my favorite big top waters for the fall. Uh, this would kind of be a repeat of something we've already talked about. But uh, I'm a little stick. Uh, obviously, they even make a bigger version. They make a big stick. This is a really good fall top water. Super Spook, the Saltwater Super Spook, probably the number one uh, top water across the country year in, year out. Uh, you can buy these anywhere. Gonna throw bone, love bone, don't overthink it. Throw white and you'll catch them. This is actually a really uh, a good one. It's really big and a lot of guys this is uh, the Storm Arashi uh, Top Walker. This is a really good one. And it actually has some big teeth marks on this thing somewhere. And it's pretty loud. It has a really good walking action. Great, great bait here. Uh, very underrated. A lot of guys don't talk about this bait. Uh, but it does catch them. Probably doesn't have the hype that all these other top waters do. But it will catch fish. I really like this. You can tell it's got all kinds of rattles and stuff in it internally. Great bait made very well. Of course, this is the Shower Blow SB125. They make a 150 that's even bigger. But this guy right here, uh, this is the best one. This is what everybody wants. And if you look up the Kentucky Lake Regional on Kentucky Lake, a lot of guys were throwing this. Our lake's down, but this bait right here will get bit. A spook with a lead wire around the back treble. Yeah, uh, probably to help cast farther or keep that spook, uh, when it stops, it sits nose down. Um uh, or nose up in the water. Some people like that. I don't know why you would do it, but Let's see what else I got up here. Oh yeah. This is uh probably the most popular bait for fall fishing to catch bigs and that is oh shit the old whopper plopper the 130 size this is bone uh you know river to see's bone is more of yellow but it just depends on who you ask some guys say this is bone some guys say white is bone but uh this one right here this this is a catch fish um I love the plopper, uh, love the design, and it's kind of been out for a few years, and 
it's unreal the hype this bait has now. Um, four or five years ago, there was probably a handful of guys around here that knew what this was. Now everybody in the country uh, knows what the Whopper Plopper is. It's a spinoff of a musky bait called the Top Rider. Um, they make a 190, which is huge, just like a baby leg. This is a little bit smaller than that. Oh, I got one, Gabriel, the Chapo. You want to see it? Let's see. We'll do a little comparison here. Since everybody says Berkeley knocked off the Whopper Plopper, uh, man, it's actually pretty crazy how much different they are. Um, so here's the Chapo. Chapo up top, Whopper Plopper on the bottom. So I'm here to show you guys, man, there's a lot of differences in those baits. That is not a straight knockoff. Uh, the tail's a whole lot different. The body's designed a whole lot different. I mean, knockoff? I don't think so. I think it's probably just a, they made their own design of a plopper bait. And I hate to tell people if you thought that with the success of the Whopper Plopper, no other companies were going to make a spinning tail size top style top order. Got yourself wrong because there's a lot of them going to do it. I like the, uh, I actually have thrown this quite a bit. You can see with the braid hanging off. Uh, the Chapo's got a good sound to it. It casts pretty well. Um, it's got a different sound to it. It's, uh, it's hard to explain. This The plastic's made out of a different material than the Whopper Plopper, so it has a different sound, but I like that Chapo. Uh, you can tell that the tail's got a whole different cut than the Plopper. Totally different looking bait. So all the guys that were complaining to ICAST how bad they uh, knocked off a river to sea, man, I don't think they remember what their ploppers look like. Now, and that's when you're... I'm comparing a 130 size. If you get down into the, the 110, it does have a little bit more of the shape of the 110 plopper. I'll be honest with you. But comparing size, uh, the 130 and the Chapo are definitely different. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's all about what uh, confidence you have. If you're a Whopper plopper guy, hey, stick with the plopper. If you want to experiment, go throw both. And then Figure out which one you like the best. Let's see, I'll catch back up on questions. Oh yeah, I remember, it was actually the Norman front runner, Steve. Uh, they do not make those anymore. And I seen where Tactical Bassin did a video and talked about it. That was bad because those are hard to find and everybody wants them now. Uh, do I like the 75 Whopper Plopper? Uh, yeah, it's all right. I, I like it quite a bit. I've got some behind me uh, hanging up here in boxes. I've got every size, actually. Um, I don't really feel like busting them all out right now. Um, the chopper is, uh, Chapo is a little cheater. What poppers do I use? Well, I, I traditionally like a Rico and, and whatever, but... Uh, I was trying to stay on big baits. I don't really have any big poppers uh, for the fall. Um, I need to get some sleep bad. So, one thing I do throw a lot in the fall is a really big spinner bait. And I'll see if I can grab that for you. I throw a big spinner bait quite a bit in the fall. And when I say big, I'm talking three quarter up to one ounce. Um, this is one I really like. This is a Nichols Pulsator. This is a, a three quarter ounce. And you see on the back, I've actually got a Kitek uh, 3.8 swim bait. This would catch them. Uh, notice that skirt color. Uh, this is called Shad Spawn. I paired up with this Kitek on the back. Uh, I get a lot of really big bites. <clears throat> I'm going to go back here and answer a few questions. I'm going to have to jump off here quick tonight because I've got to go shower and get ready to go into work.
Yeah, I do like the Mega Bass Pop X. Very good bait. Ooh, hog collar spinner bait. I don't know if they make it or not. I know some people that have a bunch of them. All right. I hate to cut y'all guys short. Um, on form reason, it never wants to charge. And I'm getting really fed up with I just bought this cell phone a month ago. I went through six chargers and it'll work for a day and all of a sudden it won't charge anymore. So I'm going to have to jump off here. Guys, I really apologize. I'm going to try to be more organized next Tuesday. And uh, we'll jump back on Tackle Tuesday. And I'm really, I want to apologize. But I did get a package in the mail from Sticks Fishing. I think I got a whole set of new fishing rods. And can't wait to bring that to you. Um, so, guys, I apologize. I'm going to have to jump off here. We'll do it again next Tuesday or join me on Thursday for Facebook Live. Y'all have a good one.